Okay, thank you. We're here. We're back from our summer break, and uh, it's Tuesday, September 19. And our first item is just an update from uh, Chappaqua Crossing East Village. Uh, this is an update regarding the completion date of the Sawmill River Parkway uh, and Roaring Brook intersection improvements, including the traffic signal and turning lanes. Uh, we last heard this on July 18th, so uh, we had um, looked at this. We had um, um, granted the applicant uh, some additional uh, building permits and COs over the summer. We hope you haven't bumped up against that limit, but in any event, uh, we're looking to get an update to see where we are and um, what the next step might be. So if the applicant could fill us in on it, it would be appreciated. We, we, we suggest that your summer report will be more interesting than ours. <laughs> you want to hear about our summer vacations as well? That's exactly right. <laughs> That's right. Um, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Dave Cooper, a partner with the law firm of Saturn and Steinmetz, here representing uh, Toll Brothers, the uh, residential developer at uh, Chapel Cross East Village. Uh, with me uh, is uh, Greg Otis. Uh, on Zoom as well from Toll Brothers, the uh, senior land development uh, manager and project manager on, on this one. Um, with, with respect to an update, uh, we can tell you that, that Toll is continuing to push uh, sub summit development uh, to complete the work. Um, our understanding is that as of today, uh, Verdi, their electrical uh, uh, um, contractor, has completed the electrical work. Um, there are a couple of, of outstanding items uh, that uh, are, are required in order to close out the permit. Um, one is the uh, DOT has requested a minor change in the uh, signal light, um, and some development is, is uh, reporting to us that they're going to uh, 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 undertake that update or that change next week. Um, also, uh, road striping um, is still, still needs to occur. I believe that, that is scheduled for the following week. Um, and then uh, overhead signal testing and signal cabinet testing, which would occur at the end of September and in October. So hopefully by uh, mid-October, the, the permit would be uh, closed out. Um, what we can also tell you from, from Toll Brothers, and obviously we had a discussion when we met with your lines, where our hands are a little bit tied because we're not a permit on this permit, uh, but um, uh, you know, they, they are holding a sum of large sum of uh, money in escrow pending the um, the closure of, of this uh, permit. So, you know, rest assured, we're trying the best we can to, to, to push this on our end as well. Right. So, uh, I had heard earlier that the ETA might be somewhere uh, closer to the early part of October, but you think by mid October you should be all set? Um, I, I, I hope so. I'll leave it to Greg. Greg. Uh, I don't, 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 don't want to get, get him to hopes up and then you tell me to uh, push it a little further. So, so. so go, go ahead, Greg. Greg. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Good, good evening, Mr. Chairman, Chairman members of the board, board staff. Uh, uh, yes, we, we believe that it's right around the October you know, 7th to 9th range for the DOT and MTA to complete their uh, <coughs> signal uh, switchover. And then, as David mentioned, the remaining work after the signal switchover would consist of the final uh, road striping work, um, you know, weather pending. So we think that, you know, by, I'm just going to say, you know, middle of October, all the work is completed, uh, the final certification letters should be submitted uh, to the DOT, at which time they'll begin their review to close out the permit. Uh, so we're, you know, as, again, as David mentioned, we, we continue to push uh, Dave Walsh um, and SG Summit, and uh, we, we're we really hoping to have this wrapped up as, as much as, as the town uh, would like this wrapped up. Um, and so we, we think that this is good news um, to report back to the board. And um, we really appreciate your, your assistance, um, you know, in, in coordinating this as well with us. Appreciate it. Great. So where are you right now in terms of um, uh, building permits and COs? Uh, in terms of... Uh, trying to find the sheet in here. It's just a pile of stuff that we yeah, got the numbers. I, you know, I apologize. I'm, I'm going to get. I'm going to try to just estimate. Um, but I think on the, on the building permit side, um, you know, we're getting close to close to the upper 30 mark right now on the building permits. 
And in terms of COs, um, Bob, do you have a better handle on the COs? I mean, it could be, I think it's in the, the almost the 20, 20 yard, 15 to 20. I think that's a good estimate. I think that's a good estimate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that a new protractor there, Bob? That's that's that's, that's, that's what I'm building for. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good estimate of the right I agree. So I think we had granted uh, 63 building permits, 45 COs. Um, not in any way to be punitive. Uh, if, if that's enough until we see you again in October, maybe uh, our second meeting in October, because the first one looks like it'll be postponed, mm -hmm. canceled. The 19th. 19th? Uh, if you need any more, I mean, uh, certainly. 17th. 17th. It'll be October 17th. If you need more, we, we don't want to hold you up by the same token. We feel as though, I guess, based on the phone traffic that the town receives about uh, people upset about this thing not coming to a conclusion. Um, uh, I think it's appropriate that we hold some back, but not in any way to hold you guys back from you know the construction that you have underway. It doesn't seem like we. It looks like we we were pretty generous with the numbers, so that you're you're in good shape. So um, this is not meant to be uh, you know punitive to Toll Brothers and, and your activities. Yeah. It's really thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. It's, it's really I think it's more yeah. about I think it's more about the optics, you know that. We look like we're earning our pay here. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Jack, how, how long is the agenda, agenda going to be on that, on that, that second, second meeting? meeting? <laughs> we don't know. It's, it's close, close to this one. We're, we're happy to come back. back. No, we can, we can put you in the, in the front of the, of the agenda. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that, that, that would be appreciated. Yep. You'd have to sit back for cupcakes again or something, but otherwise, we're okay. So if that's, yeah. if that's fair, I mean, do you need anything more from us at this point? It sounds like you guys are making great progress, so that the DOT is finally making some good progress, and we're moving forward. And this thing is, is it sounds like it'll be closed out, and this is great. Hopefully by the 17th, is it, did you say? This next yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah, by we're, the 17th, we're, we're, we'll be, we're, you'll be all set and closed. By the 7th, October 7th. Yeah, 7th, yeah, 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 yeah I, I think, I think, I think the work complete, the, the new signal, signal offer, you know, is, is operational, operational by, by the, the, the middle, middle of October, October there. there. Yep. Um, and then we'll work, obviously we'll work with, um, you know, Dave Walsh's group to, you know, formally close the permit. Okay. Um, so, so at this time, I, I think, you know, from, from our side, Toll Brothers, um, we, we have everything that we need at this time and we appreciate the, um, you know, everything from the town side as well. Thank you. Okay, good. So we'll see you uh, next month. All right. Okay. Good. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay, uh, our next items are uh, minutes. So we have, um, this is the first time I've ever seen where the resolutions are actually finished and done with the minutes. I never knew they were so long. Anyway, so we have minutes from uh, June 21. Does anyone have any questions or issues on the minutes? June 21? No. If not, Dick, are you okay with that? Uh, he sent me um, changes. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So. Alicia? 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 Yes. Uh, you, you got, got my note, note right? right? I did. Thank you. Okay. Great. So subject to those uh, relatively minor changes, is there a motion to adopt the minutes of June 21? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we have the minutes from July 18. Um, Same. There's a change. Yeah, I think I have one or two, but I'll, I'll just scan over to you. Okay. Very tiny. So uh, with uh, those minor amendments, is there a motion to adopt the minutes of July 18? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, we have a discussion item that was, that was added here. Um, uh, so um, apparently the you know the seeker is underway, and um, maybe um, Sabrina and Jennifer, uh, if you would just give us a little update. I mean, uh, where we are on the seeker and what uh, what role, if anything, the, the planning board has in this, and um, uh, where we go from here. My understanding is we've had some discussion on this. 
is that the planning board is an interested agency in this this project. Well, whatever this petition, which includes uh, seeker review. Um, so there's nothing more that we need to do to do that. But perhaps it would be important to understand what that what that really means. And um, um, and then the next step is what the planning board does or wants to do in terms of weighing in as an interested uh, agency. Yes, yeah, so I'll let Sabrina chime in as far as what the current status is before the town board sure. because she's been more involved um, on that end than I have. But um, my understanding is that they are in the process of reviewing a draft negative declaration, so finding that there's no significant adverse environmental impact for the proposed action. The proposed action being the legislation, the, the proposed legislation. In reviewing that proposed legislation, because it obviously involves a project specific to that legislation, um, they have been reviewing the impacts of that project as part of the seeker review of the legislation. So that's all part of the, the proposed action that they're reviewing. Um, the town board is the lead agency. Um, they did circulate a notice of intent. Gosh, it was sometime late last year, I think we It was in July of 2022. 2022. Oh, thank you. Well, I was earlier than I thought. Yeah, um, so, 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 so if I may, Jen, um, just as, as far as the current status, the town board had a work session on 9-5 to walk through the uh, draft negative <laughs> declaration, um, which I circulated to your board this afternoon. Um, the public hearing has been closed with the um, acceptance of written comments um, up to October 2nd. Um, I think it was at 12 noon or the close of business. They're willing to accept written comments. Um, so the town board is feeling pretty comfortable with the negative declaration um, at the moment, um, and they will be considering uh, draft resolutions of approval for both acceptance of the negative deck um, as well as adoption of legislation. So that's the current status of the project. Um, as Jen indicated, the planning board was listed as an interested agency in the agency notice circulation that was distributed in June 2022. If you recall early conversations that your board had, you had um, seeker comments um, as well as project comments and legislative comments. So um, you will find um, on those matters, uh, given your role as an interested agency, as, as well as an agency that is referred legislative um, amendments uh, by the town board. So I don't know where I was um, before, but um, very good. good. It's okay. <laughs> um, the town board, yes, yeah, Sabrina mentioned serving as lead agency or an interested agency. You have the opportunity to comment, which you have. You still have the opportunity to comment. Um, the town board has not, you know, adopted a secret determination yet, so you still have the opportunity. A draft is available. Um, you can review that and comment as you wish. So is that draft available online, I guess? I believe it is, yes. Sabrina circulated to the board earlier today a link um, to the town board packet from September 5th, where it is available to the public. So, uh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> I looked for it on the town website and couldn't find it in the, in the, um, the, the, the posting for this project where okay. all the documentation is there. And the, the, I looked for it, it was this morning or yesterday afternoon. And the most recent one I could find was the August 3rd, okay. August 3rd, I think, yes. And that, that did not include a lot of the material that Sabrina and whoever has now put into the actual EAF, and draft EAF. Mm -hmm. And so I looked for it again, and we got an email, I think, from Sabrina this afternoon mm -hmm giving us the link to uh, access to town board materials. But uh, so, but I don't, is this document available to the public on the yes. town website? Yes, yeah, so instead of looking at the project site, and Sabrina, maybe 
the project site should be updated to include this draft. But um, if you look at the town board agenda packet, similar to like how you look at your packets on, on e-codes on the town board agenda site, similar to that, the okay. town board also provides all of its documents. So I was looking at the wrong place. September 5th. Thank you. Meeting okay. packet. It's in yeah, there. well, I just, I just found that email uh, before I came to this meeting about a half hour ago. Yeah. So we... Um, I guess I haven't had a chance to look at this material, the latest draft. And I know that we made comments back before when, uh, must have been back in February, I think. Mm. Maybe it was March. <laughs> we right. made comments uh, to the project as it stood then. And there actually was not an EIS document of any kind at that point in time. We were just raising questions with regard to Seagro at that point in time. Like the town board was still in an information collecting Correct. stage, right? Correct. right. And right we just now wanted, they have a draft determination. Right, and we wanted to raise some red flags, uh, what our concerns might were, mm -hmm. where this might be a question, these questions that might end up needing to be addressed in Seagro. Right. That relates back to the actual project. Right. So... Um, now we actually have an EAF. Now we actually have a, a draft document. Mm -hmm. And the way I understand it, we now have, uh, Sabrina, we have until the 2nd of October to respond. Is yeah, that yes. yes. Well, um, all, but, Tom, Tom, let me just clarify. It's sure. not an EAF. Okay. okay. The EAF stands for Environmental Assessment Form. What you have for review right now is a draft environmental determination. Okay. Okay. okay, and, and just, just making that, that distinction because different acronyms in the environmental arena mean different, different things. Um, you have um, the town board has closed the public hearing and you are able to submit written comments until October 2nd at noon. So what is the determination uh, under <laughs> all these categories of EAF, uh, type one, um, coordinated review, uncoordinated review, um, no, it has been a coordinated review. Yes. It has been a coordinated review. The, the town board is a lead agency. The, the planning board was listed as an interested agency. Right. As part of the secret process, the town board has been asking for different information. The applicant has been submitting information. All of that information has been submitted, and the town board asked for a draft negative declaration or a draft determination of no significant adverse environmental impact. That is the document that you have before you. So all of the information that the town board has received, comments from your board, comments from the fire department, comments from the public, Commingled with information submitted by the applicant that has been provided as part of this application process have all been examined and incorporated into the negative declaration, the draft negative declaration that the town board is currently um, considering and potentially amending. So just because I, I quite frank, frankly forget where this all began in detail, but it's an it's a coordinated review for a type one unlisted unlisted, unlisted. thank you unlisted. it is an unlisted action got it thank you and, and just so you you're aware secret doesn't require that legislative decisions go through the secret process um, many times they are just type two actions Due to the extent of this application, and if you recall in the beginning, it was intended that the application for the legislation along with the site plan were to proceed along the same path at the same time, the town board classified this as an unlisted action. We no longer have a site plan application tied to this action. It is solely adoption of the legislation, and the town board is interested in attaching the contract concept plans to the legislation well yeah and I, and I and I think um my understanding of the local law is that the reason I think that the town board wisely segregated the so-called application from the legislation is that until there is a change in the zoning law it is the planning board that would have jurisdiction over an application 
in, in the Hamlet. So that was, a, a, you know, effectively very clever, uh, cleverly uh, moved around us. Um, I'll leave it to others as to whether or not people think that's good government or not. But uh, that's in effect is what happened here. Is and so even now, you know, we speak in terms of the seeker review. It's a seeker review on the legislation, the petition. But it's really not a seeker review on the application. There is no application for an Correct. actual action. So there really is, uh, there cannot really be yet a seeker review for the actual proposed action. There is, though. It's, How it can is there be? being reviewed on a conceptual level. I understand, but so really, should it be until the legislation is approved? Can you, you or can, should it? And you should. So whenever you have zoning legislation, mm -hmm that really impacts, you know, a very discrete amount of projects or a discrete amount of properties, you should be reviewing the impacts of the development of those properties so, with the legislation in order to avoid segmentation. That doesn't have to get down into the very nitty-gritty right, right. details of, you know, site-specific issues, but on a conceptual level so that if and when they come back with an actual application, a land use application for the development of a project on that property, any impacts, secret impacts that fall within that box of what was already studied won't need to be studied again, but anything that falls outside of that would be subject to additional review. Right, and, and, and that was also the, the way we went about, until it was truncated, the, the form based code. But that was different because it was an area it was and, much and this different. Is, yeah. this, much is, different. this is a parcel. Yes. So it's, you know, I, I know it's, it sounds like we're dancing on the, on the head of a pin, <laughs> but uh, other folks have done that, and, and that's what's happened in this case. So it's, it's interesting to me. I, again, I, I have, uh, I'm uncomfortable with it. I understand, with it, and I agree with you. Obviously, this is what you should be doing, and yeah. we argued from the get-go that the site plan should be looked at in yeah. detail at this time. And yet it seems like it has been segmented. And then after the fact, we'll just attach this. And once the legislation's in place, then we will then we effectively have bypassed what we have now in our law in terms of the review. And of course, the, the proposed law is actually, I think he leaves the site plan review with the town board as well, which is fine. That's, that's what they want to do. It's, they have, you know, that's up to them, whether or not it's the right thing to do is something else. Um, I have opinions on that, but it, it's, it's, I, I just, I'm still uncomfortable that, that there is this, uh, that we're operating, that we are actually doing a seeker review on this application, on this project. And we're not, I mean, I know we're calling it that, but we're really not because we don't have an application. So there's a lot of uh, shadows and, and things going on here that are um, in, uh, perfectly, I suppose, legal, but highly irregular from what we've done in this town. And I've been doing this a long time, so I've never seen this done before. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I, I, I concur. One of, one of the, it's unfortunate that it's um, unlisted and it's, has been determined that it's an unlisted action. Um, and unless I'm mistaken, Jennifer, because it's an unlisted action, the usual protocols for a type one declaration of a project whereby you, in a full EIS, one would need to actually provide some alternatives, for example. So just because it's a type one action doesn't mean you're doing an EIS. That's not a direct one-to-one -one correlation. Okay. So you can have neg decks with type one actions, and, and we see it all the time, all over the place. And yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. yeah. But yeah. The, the only thing, um, no, they use the full environment. No, I mean any process that would be applicable to a type one action up until this point has has been followed with respect to the unlisted action. And it, we don't have discretion to determine whether it's type one or unlisted or type two. It is what it is. It either falls within the list in secret or it doesn't. So mm -hmm. yep. um, this was properly classified as unlisted because it doesn't meet any of those type one thresholds. I can confirm that. Yep. And I, I don't think I 
disagree with the where the town board is going on in that deck. I think that probably is is the right conclusion. But again, we've talked about this. Uh, all of us have talked about this at one point or another. Is that it's a very um, odd process that we have followed to get to this uh, the stage. And what happens is when you start out with an odd process, you end up with something that is uh, different from what uh, maybe so though, we should have been looking at. Um, so though it's a project would not require a full EIS as this one, we're, we're declaring that this one does not require a full EIS. Mm -hmm. It nonetheless um, goes through the process to determine whether it's a negative or positive declaration. Correct. Yes. And in the negative and positive declaration decision, yeah. there is what's, I think the term of art might be the term of law, is that one needs to actually take what's known as a hard look Correct. at the elements which are in the scope of items that are going to be looked at in the in the process of determining whether it's a positive or negative. So right, a hard look is is taken with respect to all of the relevant environmental impacts, all of the possible relevant environmental impacts. Um, use the word scope, which actually is a term of art in SECRA, and that would come after a positive declaration. So after after finding that there may be one or more significant adverse environmental impacts. Then you get to a scoping document, which is the table of contents for your environmental impact statement. But that's not happening here because we have a draft negative declaration. Got so it. the town board took a hard look at all the relevant impacts, and they've asked that a document be prepared, finding that there's no significant impacts. So I in, in, incorrectly used the word scope. What I really intended to uh, address or the elements that are looked at within the analysis of whether it's a positive or a, a positive or negative, you know, significant impacts. Right. I didn't think you were using it in the secret term, but yeah. I wanted to make the sure that we're all term, on the same page is, there. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so uh, at some point, those elements are determined by who? It's really, it's a combination of the town board and its staff and its professional consultants. It's a review of all of the information in the record before it. Um, the, the part one of the EAF, which gives all of the nitty gritty details about the proposed action that they're looking at. Um, all of the professional studies, um, the plans, the, the legislation itself. Um, mapping all, all of the information that's before the board. The board looks at that, it receives input from it. It's involved in interested agencies, public. staff, consultants, public, absolutely. Um, and it's a, it's a combination of all of those things. But ultimately, it's up to the board to determine, okay, what, what do we think the relevant impacts are here? Um, obviously, you know, if we're talking about 50 North Greeley, you know, I, I don't believe there are steep slopes on the property, right? So steep slopes... We put that aside. That's obviously not a relevant environmental impact here. Um, so they really just try to focus on the relevant ones. If, if I may, Seeker also has roughly 18 categories that all of the information falls within, 18 or 19 categories that we kind of take each one of those and you'll see the draft negative, negative declaration is associated with one of those categories. Um, and it speaks to impacts within each of those 18 categories, whether or not they exist, how they're treated, and whether or not there is an impact. So those are the same categories that, uh, under a different circumstance, go into a scoping decision. Are they the same categories that one addresses? The Verity Environmental Assessment Forms, yes. yes. So, so, so regardless, any project that walks through the secret process is examined under those 18 categories. You know, land, water, groundwater, um, vegetation, community character, Safety plans, <coughs> socioeconomics, yes, yes. Uh, health and safety. Right. So it's a checklist that I means a standard checklist that is always right. always used. Correct. Right. Always. In fact, yes. you have to use it. That's. Yeah. And, and we expand on that, you know, we, we look at socioeconomics, we look at school capacity, 
Um, you know, those are, are those are requests of the town board. Um, you know, to look at those that specificity in certain areas. So, um, the 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 part of this that I mean, I, I think the day is long past on this, um, but the part of it that I was always uncomfortable with was the notion that actually we are attaching a an actual project proposal to this zoning legislation action. And I thought that it would be better to separate those entirely and to identify what would be just a normal, typical zoning sort of legislation that has to do with, you know, what's the policy here? Mm -hmm. Do we want four stories or three stories? Mm -hmm. um, what are some basic things that no zoning normally would address mm -hmm. in the in the interest of manifesting the comprehensive plan mm -hmm. and some notions about what this neighborhood, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to call it neighborhood, it's not a neighborhood, but it certainly could be, what this part of town could actually become as a policy matter. And I would have always been very, very uncomfortable with actually a actual development proposal leading this process. I mean, that's what's happening here. It's the development proposals itself. It's the developer. It seems to be, to me, the aggressive posture within the town's policy framework, an aggressive posture driving, I, th I think, driving it past a point of discussion about what that policy, how that policy, what the policy actually is and how it could be represented, and how it could be put into zoning. Yep. And then okay. we could end up with a different, you know, per perhaps, mm -hmm. maybe not, but a different application one day. Mm -hmm. And that's the way zoning is usually done. Mm -hmm. I understand the special permit thing. Uh, you know, I get how that works. If this were a church, if this were a hospital, if this were something which actually was a special permit, which had an institutional purpose, a public purpose, specific to... Uh, a rare instance specific to a particular need, then I could see taking those two, the application and the zoning issue, the, the zoning initiative, bubbling it together and saying, we're going to do this here. Mm -hmm. This to me is different. This to me is a developer's, to me, this is a developer's initiative. And um, I just think it's been handled incorrectly. And I, I my fear is, it's going to be to the disbenefit ultimately. And I said this, I'm not saying this for the first time, i said it many times. So my question now is, in the review of where we are right now, and our status as an interested agency, um, the town board has, the town board didn't have to actually hear um, public comments unless I'm mistaken. On the local law, they were required to have a public hearing. I'm talking about the... the On CEPRA, the, the there's the no CEPRA. public hearing that would have been required at this point. It's CEPRA. encouraged, but it's not required. And so they, um, it, since no public hearing or public comments are actually required on the CEPRA, they have the, um, they have the discretion to decide on October 2nd that that's actually the day. There is no specific time period they have to leave this comment, comment period open according to CEPA regulations. No, but they have had a public hearing. Um, it's been on the local law, but I, I, have to, I haven't listened to the public hearing comments, but I have to imagine that there were some comments related to CEPA voiced during the public hearing. Um, so they're, they're pulling in information related to CEPA, even though the public hearing isn't specifically on CEPA, it's on the legislation, but they're still pulling in information that's relevant to their secret determination. So they would be hearing uh, comments up until the second, and then on the third, uh, Sabrina, I guess, on the third, having those comments available to them in their public meeting to then determine whether they need to make adjustments to the whole thing or parts of the thing, sure. or they just go ahead and just vote, uh, vote it yep. in. Yep. Yes, yes, comments are due on the second. The town board is meeting on October third, and they have two paths set ahead of them. They either um, adopt the resolutions 
um, or they hold off until they, you know, make changes. And again, to be clear, the public hearing was closed. They were not obligated to extend this uh, written period, but they, the tradition in this town is we always do that. And there was some discussion as to how long they would do that. But, you know, they were not obligated to do that, but they, they did do it. And I think they extended it for three weeks, which was, you know, I thought pretty generous. To, so to get um, comments in. leaves it now up to what do we do as an interested agency? Do we... What's our feeling about? Our well, I, I, th I know it's been represented that we have already made comments on CEQA during this process. I don't recall that. Uh, we talked about that this morning. I, I don't recall specifically that we ever made comments on CEQA, and the reason for that is we never had any data to that uh, secret information that we would actually comment on. Um, we certainly did talk about the site plan. We talked about legislation, of course, but I don't recall ever doing anything on CEQA itself. So... Um, you know, uh, we don't meet again until after this public hearing, so I don't know if there's interest in, in, in having a special meeting so that you put together a memo. Um, I haven't even seen this email that, that Sabrina sent this afternoon, so I haven't seen the, uh, the document. I have, you know, again, um, I suspect <coughs> that uh, a neg deck is, is, probably in order when you go through the 18 uh, pieces. Maybe not. But um, nonetheless, uh, there still could be comments, yay or nay, or, or just changes uh, that we think are important. Um, and then we have that, um, you know, I think we, all, we have that obligation to, to weigh in if we, if we feel that we should. Can I just understand, uh, just process-wise, um, if as it stands now, the comment period is open until October 2nd. The town board plan or has a has a meeting on October 3rd. They could theoretically, and it sounds like maybe this was their intention, but they could theoretically um, pass the zoning legislation on October 3rd, correct? Okay, yes. And then there would be legislation for 50 North Greeley that allows any number of uh, then as of right developments, and we could then expect an application to quickly follow suit, presumably, from the applicant here for development of the site. And because the legislation was drafted as it was, that would go to the town board. Uh, the planning board would have no jurisdiction, no longer um, meet or discuss it, uh, even though we are, we're no longer an interested agency at that point. We're an, inter we're an interested agency as it pertains to the zoning legislation, but not to an application. Sure, you, yeah, I think you, you still could be classified as an interested agency. Unless I'm mistaken. I'm, I'm, on an application? It, yeah, it, if you literally have an interest in the application, if you have an interest in commenting, you can you can request to be listed as an interested agency. Look, there, there would not be a secret. 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 secret action. Is on, on, so it's not, not a secret. Not necessarily. I'm sorry? Not no. necessarily. Well, is that right? Yeah, I mean, once an application comes in, pursuant to that legislation, there would need to be a review done by whoever the lead agency is going to be to make sure that it's, it's still falls within with remember the, with that, the legislation. that box of yeah. what was studied previously. If all of a sudden there's a change... Within the non-scope scope. Yeah, right. right, right. So. There still needs to be some amount of review done, for sure. Uh, so there, there is potentially a secret review position for the planning board down the road on this, potentially. Well, only there, if there's a material change, right? And only if there's a correct. referral. I, I don't see any secret review with us at all. No, I, I think that there is an opportunity that's written into the legislation for a referral to the planning board. That's where I was going. Um, okay. But it's not a secret. No. It's, it's, it's not, not a secret. secret right it, is, it is review of the application, a special permit application. But that's yeah. even more of a reason why, to the extent there is a review of, under secret to make sure that there aren't any impacts that go beyond what was already studied. Because you have a referral, you're an, an, an acting in an advisory capacity to the to the approval authority. That absolutely qualifies you as an interested agency, interested agency. Not, not, involved not involved because agency. you don't have an approval over one right. as, any aspect of the project. Right. But it's certainly an interested agency. Right. I should have brought my. 
Tom had the benefit of hearing me. She was. Great, <laughs> I don't know by if it was a way. benefit, but uh, Tom came to the New York Planning Federation this conference it, last week, so this is what it, I should have brought my PowerPoint. We could have gone through. You were just the going whole for the CIA process. I, I, I went up to Hyde Park. There was a Here's state a uh, for punishment, I guess. So. No, I had a state planning uh, thing for uh, getting some uh, some. Tea. And there's this. Uh, so Jennifer was giving a lecture on. Uh, on this particular subject, not this project. No, this but the secret in general. And she talked brilliantly for an hour. And what I learned was that if I just kept quiet, I could learn a lot from you. <laughs> <laughs> all these years. you all the time. All these years. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> she was brilliant. <laughs> so thank you for the lecture. It was really, of course, I came back Glad not learning helpful. anything because I have all these questions again. Um, so I, I understand that we do have a referral uh, position. They can refer, or I think it last I last person I, I think that they have to refer it to us. I thought it was discretionary. Discretionary, okay, yeah. discretionary. Yeah, I, I mean, I I don't even know why. You know, I would even look at it because we've already talked about this and made our comments, and I, I mean. <laughs> It's so up to others on the board to decide whether they would want to take it up on referral, but I have no interest in doing that because we've already said what I think. I've already said what I think needs to be said about this, and there's no point in you know going through that all over again to no purpose. Um, so I am interested in taking this point in time because I'm not certain that I did. I, I skimmed it before I came, the, the uh, latest version of it that I picked up off of the website for the link that, um, that um, Sabrina sent of the, um, of the document, the secret document. And I'm not sure that there really is necessary, that it, in certain areas, I'm not sure that the hard look has actually been done. And so, I think that, from my my perspective, I think that there are some questions that probably could be asked about certain parts of this to be sure that the hard look is uh, has been uh, properly uh, done on it. And so I was either can do this just as a interested party as a citizen, or have it part of a planning board uh, response as an interested agency. And what I would suggest in the in the second instance is that we only have you know, a couple of weeks, and I just don't I don't think that there's necessarily time to go through this whole document. Maybe there is, and come to some consensus on it and right. put together a, you know the consensus is part of the discussion back and forth. Before we have had documents that we have sent memos we've sent to the uh, to the town board, which are not necessarily consensus documents in every case, but um, statements and observations by individual members that are just assembled in one memo, one memo that comes from the planning board to the town board, and the town board then is free to do with it what they will. I imagine we are going to have differences of opinion on some of these things. I can see it coming. but. I don't think that that ought to get in the way of us putting our individual best efforts forward as planning board members in the context of the planning board. We, I guess we could do that. I mean, as, as long as we let the town board know that it's not uh, an official consensus document, uh, I, that could make some sense. Because I, I, I don't think, frankly, we have sufficient time if we want to weigh in on the secret review between now and October 2nd, we'd have to have a special meeting and we'd have to get together and, and that, that is difficult uh, just doing that, finding time. And uh, then it's, it's difficult to kind of assemble it. I, I think actually most of our memos have been, uh, and that's why it's been a little bit painstaking, is that they have been, for the most part, consensus ones. We've had uh, actually some specific... Um, uh, other statements. Uh, I think Eldad had one one time. I think Kanan had one uh, one time, which was I, I, I thought was highly appropriate and, and the right thing to do, so that the town board knew. You know, we're not 100% congruent, and we have different thoughts. And if they want 100% congruency, they they should they shouldn't want that. 
So um, we could try that if people, you know, we could just put together a package and say, here are five um, letters or memos from members of, the, of concerned members of the board who agree or disagree on various uh, subjects. We could, we could try that. If that's just too cumbersome, then I guess we just resort to the just individual uh, notes. Can, can citizens, excuse me, can, can citizens, citizens um, produce, produce documents also? Yes. And, and, and I wanted to say that, that, that we, you shouldn't confuse whether or not it's coming from the planning board because in order for a memo to come from the planning board, it has to be um, resolved at your meetings. Right. Or at a meeting with a quorum. So that, let's make the distinction, right? If it is a memo of the planning board, whether it represents one opinion or five different opinions, there's a formality attached to it that I'm not certain you have the time right. to meet that deadline. But any, any individual member of the planning board can submit written comments as an individual to the town board. And, and, and the other... Citizen. Yeah, and, and the other... Uh, item that came up during the discussion about the extension for the, the written period was there was, I think, uh, genuine interest in making certain that as much information came in during those two or three weeks. And the town board members spoke to the fact that they will look at all of this and if they felt that changes had to be made to the documents, which, whichever documents you know, that Sabrina is working on, um, I, I did not necessarily get the feeling that October 3rd was going to be the day that they would take action. That was the first day that they would meet as a group and start to look at all the information and start to sort through it all and sort through the documents. But I would be very surprised if they actually took action that evening. They might. But I think they were quite serious in, in, in um, wanting to make sure that they heard things. And I th there was a lot of opinion that... Uh, um, that they would make changes if, if, if appropriate. And I think they, they're sort of obligated in that. That's, that's what the, the public uh, hearing process is. Well, so it's and then, and <laughs> as, as your board knows, if it, having gone through this process many times, if the public waits until the deadline to submit volumes of information, that information needs to be reviewed before I, as a professional, can advise the town board to move forward. I have a, a question that um, I remember a long time ago when we started some of this, you know, I, just, I had a concern about, you know, the, the, um, you know, the pilings that, that were going to be put in the ground to uh, make this building uh, safe. Now, it's, it's still a gooey place. Uh, you know, there are 150 piles probably somewhere in that range for that little building uh, that's there. Um, you know, and, and oh, gee, uh, that could be a real killer to them if they haven't really done a serious study, for instance, uh, before this thing gets to the end. Uh, you know, that could kill the project because the weight of this building is going to be more than the weight of the the uh, uh, possible uh, uh, building that's going to, the, the existing building that that is there. And, you know, I think that's, you know, like a significant thing. Uh, would that be something that, you know, that I could, um, you know, submit or, or something? Uh, and, 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 serious problem because it's the, I don't, I doubt very much that the piles go to rock. They're friction probably oriented. And, and, and you can absolutely submit that comment, Dick. It is completely appropriate for you to submit that comment. That is not a new comment that the town board has heard. Mm, I think well, that, that's a good example. I, I haven't heard anybody say it's okay. That's a good example. Of what? And, and, and unfortunately, because of the nature of the conceptual plans that we have, we don't know if it's okay. We will not know if it's okay until they get into the site plan application phase. Right. And that's essentially even the building phase. That was my point before about conceptual versus specific versus site specific. That's the kind of thing we wouldn't expect until the legislation's in place and they know they can go forward. We wouldn't expect a property owner to outlay that money to do those very intensive studies to find that data out until they get the legislation in place and go to that site-specific review. And that's why I think there, there will have to be some level of environmental review done 
at the application stage because there's certain things that we don't know right now. And that's okay that we don't know them because there's legislation being put in place, not a project approval. This project, as it's proposed, might change as a result of this information, like what Dick just mentioned. There's probably other pieces of information that we don't have that we'll know once we get to that site-specific review stage. So you're suggesting... And that's completely legitimate and legal and normal procedure. So in Dick's in instance, uh, if, I'm, if I'm correct, actually this may not be... I'm not sure that that's an environmental problem because you can engineer anything. Mm -hmm. It's rather a problem that it may not be feasible for them to build the building, and that would change the nature of the project, and build a building in this particular way, yeah. and that would change the nature of the application. It could. And, and, and that change in the project may fall outside of what was reviewed under the seeker analysis, or even fall outside what is required per the special permit. That's why, to your earlier point, too, you want the legislation not just, you know, of course, it's kind of like, you know, dovetailing with this project, but you also want it to stand on its own in case this project changes or becomes something different. You want to make sure that the legislation that you have stands on its own as well. Right. right. That's something that you're comfortable with. Okay. Um, yeah, we've spoken There's a whole yeah. other. I mean, we've talked about this. Yeah, there's a whole other side of this that yeah. um, is yeah. a, a fruitless to pursue. So, yeah. in in my opinion, um, so we have to decide, I guess, how we want to proceed. I know that I will be having comments that I would like to get to the town board. <coughs> the, um, on the secret stuff. Yeah. Uh, the hard look on a couple of elements, which I think have not been done. And I think it would be, I think it would be better if we could have a document that came from the planning board, the premature of the planning board, rather than just Tom Curley as a, as a citizen. Um, but I don't know whether the rest of us have the appetite to go through that process of what that would look like. But no. It sounds like it's not even so much the appetite so much as we would need to request that the town board extend their... Or delay their timeline, no? Well, or we have a special meeting and get it done in time. Yeah. And then That's the appetite part. That's part of the appetite right, part. Right, yeah. And we have to <clears throat> obviously find a place, time, where everyone can make it for that special meeting. And, and it would probably take a fair amount of time to uh, grind it out. Um, I, 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 I suspect, I, I did watch the session, so I suspect that there's very little appetite to extend the... Uh, uh, written material time. It was quite a debate going back and forth. It really got down to more weekend versus uh, not having a weekend. So it was between you know, two and a half weeks and three weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, almost silly, uh, frankly. And uh, But I think there is, uh, you know, it was a split vote, but there was, you know, a sense that, uh, we, you know, from the, the majority that, you know, we've, we've seen this enough. We've, we've, we've heard it all. Um, and it's, it's, but they haven't. Well, well, that's uh, that's up to uh, those fo those folks who are going to be writing between now and October second. Exactly. So that's the key. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, and and I, I agree. But I think I think Sabrina raises a very good point in terms of the logistics of getting it done. I'm I'm willing to do it. I'm, I'm I, I would make myself available, and uh, it, I think it's important to do. I don't know. Kanan's not here. I don't know, Eldad, what your schedule is. Dick, I don't know what your schedule is, but I'm fine with it. Um, you know, I don't know if we have to necessarily uh, tie up staff to be here with us. You do. You might if it's a board matter, you will need staff. We will need to notice it. <laughs> yes. yep. Yep. How much notice does it need? I mean, we, well, what, three, four days, five days, something like that? So, Alicia, you publish. How, many, how much time do you need? We only publish for public hearings. Is that what this would be? No. Oh, yeah, we can just post it on the website. website. Yeah, yeah, we need so to give a couple days. days. Yeah. There's a so we've done that before when we've, we've had to do approvals for to tell people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we did it in pretty short notice, two or three days if mo at most. So we could do it. If there's an appetite, we, we can certainly try it. Um, <coughs> I, I personally think it's um, it could be important. I haven't looked at the document, so I really couldn't say for sure. Does, there, does the quorum need to be in person for something like that since it's not a hearing? You cannot, you cannot, it's, it's not a meeting unless you're in person. 
at least three are in person. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, you know, I, I actually do just want to kind of um, say that if it is individual as opposed to a board memo, to me, as staff who reviews this, it comes as equal weight, right? It, you know, it, having it written as and sent as the planning board with different opinions or individually it carries the same weight to my eyes in the sense that, I, you know, I'm staff that is reviewing all of this, determining, de determining whether or not, you know, the information is valid and presenting it to the town board for consideration. So, uh, with all due respect, I'm not writing any of this for your, your eyes. I'm writing it as a member of the planning board for the town board. There is a larger. I there is a, there, I'm sorry. Let me, let me. There is a larger responsibility here, in my opinion, of the of the uh, planning board to report to the town board. Um, I understand that you need to go through your technical analysis of whatever you get, and in that regard, your technical analysis doesn't doesn't mediate between a board and a and it's a technical analysis and a and a and an individual citizen. I understand that. But that's not the issue here. I'd expect you to do that. That's not what we're. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about a what I see as being a responsibility of the planning board to weigh in on an environmental action on this legislation, and I think that that's one of the things we're here to do. So that's my opinion, and that it would be sent under uh, that responsibility and hopefully received by the town board as um, a planning board uh, document, which um, should carry more weight than an individual person making a uh, comments to the, to their, uh, to their environmental uh, review. I, I think that's what we're here. We're here to represent, we represent the town and the, the people in the town, just as they represent the people in the town. And our specific responsibility has to do with these specific things. That's the context in which I think that this is something that that I feel we're obligated to. I don't even feel we have a choice. And if it means that, you know, we need to ask them to give us another week, then, you know, if they say no, well, then that's on them. It's not on us. So I, I you know, I don't know if there's an obligation to make comments, but I do think there's an obligation to review the documentation to see whether, you know, given our role, mm -hmm. and since the negative declaration draft document was presented to us today, it's not unreasonable for us to tell the town board we'd like to review and get back to them to see if we, if we do have comment. Right. Um, I don't think that's an unreasonable request. Um, if they don't want to extend the, uh, the time, you know, the comment period, that's on them, but I don't think it's an outrageous request of us. You know, just speaking personally, it'll be challenging to find time to have a special meeting now. Right. It's the, it's the uh, Jewish holiday season and, you know, times are... You know, time is limited, and yep. so I cannot at this moment commit to a special meeting for us to reach consensus on something. However, I, I do think it's not unreasonable to want the uh, the planning board to review and potentially comment on this document. I don't think it's an outrageous request, um, and uh, the timing is such that um, we saw it, we got this document th this afternoon, um, and that's okay. Uh, but it doesn't exactly. Um, give us sufficient time to review and potentially comment. And so, uh, you know, and I completely agree, Tom. Uh, yes, Sabrina, your review of any comments are afforded equal weight as they should, but there is a different weight to uh, the planning board uh, reviewing and commenting on these matters because it's our, it's our role. Well, and, and, and I, I agree. And, and I, my take on this is, uh, I know folks are focusing on, on Seeker. I still have a number of fundamental policy issues uh, with, with the legislation mm -hmm. and how the legislation came about. 
And those are policy issues. That's for the town board and, and, and for them to consider or not consider, again, or dismiss. But it's, uh, to me, those are important. The materials that we send to Sabrina are critically important if we're, we're supplying to technical things and Bob and Dennis, uh, and they should comment, and, 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 uh, and that's fine. But I, I agree with you guys that um, my intention is to try to uh, garner some attention on fundamental uh, policy issues. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm, I'm still focusing, I know people are focusing on secret because that's the latest thing that came in, but I, I'm still um, uh, uh, there's some issues with the proposed legislation that I think are um, a problem. Oh. And, and, and so I, my focus is still on the policy issues of the legislation. But are you so. suggesting we address that somehow? Because it, I, yeah, I, we have addressed it, obviously, in multiple... Uh, in some areas, but, I, you know, I, I, again, uh, what we haven't done is, in my opinion, step back and said, you know, let's look at the progress. Let's, let's see how we did here. We started out, we were going to study the entire Hamlet. Then we said, well, that's too tough because there's a lot of public property here and that's involved. So we got to take that off. And we got, you know, these drawings for people drawing these, you know, colossal buildings on, on the circle around the train track and it's on public property. It's, it's crazy. So then we said, okay, that's too difficult, this public property. So now we're going to take a look. We're going to focus on North Greeley because that is an area that is begging for redevelopment. Everyone agreed. No problem. So we're going to study. Now we're going to study on uh, North Greeley. We immediately called for, let's, let's look at parking, parking capacity, see what we're talking about. And the next thing that we know, we're off on another track. We've got the form-based code going, and we're not really looking at North Greeley anymore. We're looking at the form-based code for the entire Hamlet again. Then that sinks, that goes down. And then to Tom's point, all of a sudden, we now have, with the moratorium is over, where we didn't accomplish much, if anything, during the moratorium, um, except fight. Great point. Uh, here we are, and now we have a developer leading the charge and basically setting the table, setting the vision, setting the policy for North Greeley. And the next thing I'm hearing is that, well, okay, we're going to start looking at the public property. It's like a little sparkly thing comes in front of us, and we go trail off and look at the next sparkly thing. It's really, um, I've been doing this a long time, so it's really frustrating because I have participated in traffic studies and downtown studies here. Uh, for you know over 20 years and and then you know to comments that I've heard from other supervisors we don't do anything we never get anything done we forgot what we were supposed to be doing we were supposed to be looking at North Greeley and, and we've now in my opinion let a developer take lead the charge on it and I'm not saying this has nothing to good bad or indifferent about the developer the project that just as a fundamental issue should not be going on. It should be us. We should be leading the charge. And during that moratorium, I've said this many times, I'll say it again, it's going to be in, in, in writing. Had we done something else during the moratorium, such as saying, you know what, you want to see development? We're going to give you guys on North Greeley the apple, the, the carrot. We agree we'll upzone everyone here to three stories. However, as we did on South Greeley, We'll lead the charge. We'll coordinate. We're going to set up a part of the parking district. If we did that, the North Greeley would be developing the way we would want to see it. It would be fantastic. And we've done it before. We did South Greeley years ago. I mean, before my time. It, it's doable. And yet we didn't do that. And, and, and I'm just so disappointed because we're, we surrendered it once again to a developer. Tom, I, I, I was talking to uh, someone if we had not reacted to Chappaqua Crossing, we would have had 255 single home residences up there instead of what we have. So if you let a developer lead it, because they, you know, they got their, their plan, their ideas, et cetera, that's what you could end up with. I'm not saying this is, I, this is, this is neutral in terms of the project itself. And again, I, that's why I'm just focusing on, on the zoning. But our zoning, this zoning law doesn't talk in terms of what is the preferred density? What are we doing about the, the area in terms of stormwater management? What are we doing about the parking, obviously? All these kinds of fundamental, it, my God, you know, you know zoning better than I will ever know. These are the things that go into a, like a generic zoning area for a vision that we still haven't formed. And we keep kicking the planning can down the road. And what happens is when you do that, it, there's, there's a void and 
people, developers will fill the void and do what they can, what they can try to do and push the envelope. And I don't blame them. That's perfectly fine. I get it. But I am just so tired of seeing us surrender that position. Yeah, and we it. carved it out. We were supposed to do this. Yeah. And it was not that big a deal. North Greeley, we said, ah, oh, we all said, look, it's, it, it's, it's manageable. Manageable. It's calling out for a strategy, a development. It, it, it's in our hands. We can help people. Here's, here's the, and here we are. Here's what I, I think is sort of the grand. So that, that's the policy issue. The policy issues. Right, which but I am like just which you know I agree with me, you know many if not all yep. of it we've discussed this yes. and, and North Greeley is is, is and well you said about the process yeah. you were the one actually yes. talking about process, process and been, you convinced me it's like wow you're right yeah. and North Greeley is we're all on the same page but it, it's well defined yeah right and, and mm-hmm. so that also you know Tom said manageable it's the same it's the same mm-hmm. thing. go on well I, I was just going to say that the, where we are today there's just this irony to it which I just can't escape, which is that the big reaction against the form-based code was the demonstration of the build-out of the zoning, which uh, appeared in the documents and was part of the analysis for the EIS. And that's what just drove people crazy mm-hmm. because we the, the the perception was the imagery said we are essentially giving our town over to the developers and that's not us that's not what we want out of our town that is what this particular project looks exactly like it to me it it's actually if if you look at the build out of the uh, zoning, which was um, the uh, in the in the form-based code for this particular piece of property, in that document, it looks almost exactly like this project. And we have taken just look at the project and look at the numbers of the project, and it seems to me what it look it looks like a form-based code. Um, what people objected to in the form-based code, which was turning the town over to the, the developers without sufficient input of what the public uh, interest might be. And the interest we're talking about now is developing North Greeley and figuring out the right way to do it. Uh, this is exactly that. And we're back to where we were with the form-based code, uh, with the, the consequences of a form-based code build-out on this particular piece of property. And the town board is running with it. And I thought that's what the big, the big fuss was, that actually got rid of a whole town board or enough of a town board so that there's a new regime to come in so that that wouldn't happen again. And it's happening. It's happening on a smaller. In my opinion, it's happening on a smaller scale. Just look at the numbers. You don't even have to look at the imagery. Just look at the numbers of the massing of zoning. You know the 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 the, the amount of development, the parking problems or parking concerns. All of that is the form based code. And here. We're buying, the town board is buying into it. I'm not buying into it, but, you know, the planning board apparently, you know, we go to these hearings, we go to these work sessions, but I just get the feeling nobody's really listening because the things that we brought up are not actually part of their conversation. They just never get to the point of being part of their conversation. And if you go to the, and it's it's a frustration, I think, for me personally, uh, but you know that's not important. I think it's a frust- It should be a, a a frustration for the for the tent for the planning board, and it's just a bad signal uh, with respect to the relationship between the boards and the town town government. How these things should work, but it's just not happening. So this irony is just it's it's galling somehow. That's a personal emotional feeling that I shouldn't bring to this meeting, but. If this is our last chance to say something about it, I think that we need to take it on and say something. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I need to say everything I said before all over again, but because I don't think that's going to do any good, and they've already heard it. Um, I don't think they've listened to it, but they heard it. Um, but I do have a particular thing that uh, part of this uh, document, which I don't think has really been given a hard look, and I would like to put into the record somewhere what the elements of a hard look would be, the criteria of a hard look would be, that has, has not been 
uh, pursued in that particular element. And I'd like it to go in the context of a planning board document to them. Um, but if it can't go that way, then I'll just send it myself. I'm comfortable with that. If, the, if it can go that way, mm -hmm. uh, the question is, what are the logistics for that? So let, yeah. let's figure that out. I think, like I said, I, I think there's an obligation for us to look at the environmental document and decide to what extent we want to make a comment. And, and if you think, Tom, that uh, the hard look hasn't been taken, the, the proper process hasn't been followed, then I, I, we owe it. I mean, there's a reason we're on the planning board is that we have some level of experience and expertise. And so uh, I completely am supportive of that. Um, I will say that um, perhaps uh, ironically or not, that the, I do think the pro process-wise, the form-based code um, did follow the right process because it, it was a, a planning. There was a planning process. There was a zoning, and it, it wasn't. It wasn't project specific. Process-wise, uh, I, I so, you know absolutely support yeah. that process. This is this one. Obviously, we've all been on the same page as to how the process doesn't make all the sense here. So um, maybe we also use the opportunity on the comment on the environmental draft neg deck document to make sort of a one last policy mm -hmm. uh, comments, which are related, right? They're not they're, all related. they're not unrelated. Yeah, they're, they're all interrelated. Right? They're uh, related. right. So so well I, I and I, I don't know about the form based code and, but I, the supreme irony that, that that continues to hit me is as I watch the town board and I watch them react to comments and questions from the public as to how how would we stop the next application like this? And they're almost uniform. The town board members have said, oh, no, it'll never happen. No, no. We don't want another one of these. We don't want that. And we're going to come up with legislation. We're going to figure out ways that it can't even get to the ZBA because some people raise theories that the ZBA could get this somehow. And, and no, no, we have got discretion on this. And I'm saying to myself, if it's so wonderful, why are you putting the red light out on another one? If you want to, if it's so wonderful, why couldn't we duplicate it across the street or down the street or whatever it might be? It is talk about irony. Yeah. That that's the one that gets me. Watch watching Conversely, people opening themselves up to litigation for the the neighbor next door who has uh, the same request. This and, is what, what and people is denied are arbitrarily is the same. Yeah, uh, and apparently, yeah, there's case yeah. law saying they have a good deal of discretion, but uh, you know. It's not so much what the law is, it's just the reaction, which is, oh, no, <laughs> this is it. You're going to see just one. That's it. You know, over our dead bodies, we're not going to see this again. And this is an exception because they got electrical heat and, and, and uh, they're building this kind of construction. Yeah. And as we all know, <laughs> the elements that are fantastic elements that they're proposing for this, this project can be imposed on a one-story, two-story, three-story, five-story, six-story, whatever building, up to, I think they can do, what, timber up to, what, 13 stories now? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's absurd, and, and in my opinion, to say that that's the reason why we're doing it, and that's going to be the reason why we can hold the fort so that no one else can do something similar. It's, it's to watch the contortions. <laughs> Yeah. It's these people try to say, no, it'll never happen again, and, and it may they may be absolutely correct, but why would you take that position if this is so positive for the community? There was a, there was a, a, a meeting that um, where they were going over the, um, the zoning uh, text, and there was a concern that there was a, an opportunity, a window, a flaw somewhere in the zoning text that would allow somebody to come in and say, okay, I get to do this too. Mm -hmm. And so there was quite a discussion, of, um, and I think Ed Phillips was uh, involved in, uh, and with Sabrina involved in trying to figure out how do we, how do we design this text mm -hmm. so that this cannot happen again. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, why are we building something that we never want to have happen again? Mm -hmm. Instead of building something that we want to have happen right. again, and use this as a model for how we want to develop our town, and I can't, I honestly, somebody should stand up and say why we are doing this in the context of policy and planning and the future of the town. Because I just, uh, I personally don't see it. As a member of this board, I don't see it, and I've got enough experience professionally to understand these things. Where there's something here which is just not making sense for the people of this town. 
let's, let's be sure we don't do this again. Instead of let's do something that we want to showcase and do again. It's such a simple thing to do. Just write the zoning for it. Right. Exactly. It drives me crazy. Yeah. I, I think more and more I look at that. I said there, there are some solutions here. And that's, and that's what I, I, I think could be helpful is to say, you know, we always get the you know, accused of being, oh, you're just naysayers and this guy. No, no. We can do better. That's the whole point. We think we can do better. Why are we cutting uh, cutting ourselves off and, and not doing the best possible thing we can? There's no perfect, of course. Uh, Jeremy says it all the time, but I think there's a more closer to perfect than, than what we have, and I think it would be uh, it would be tremendous. It could be tremendous. And and um, again, we're leaving the yeah. the door open, and we haven't uh, done what we said we were going to do. I, what, we started this what eight years ago, seven years ago, when when Rob put together the first group, and here we are. And uh, so anyway, I'm looking at dates. I know this ho- this weekend is the holiday, right? Yom Kippur is uh, the, the whole weekend and yeah. Monday and Tuesday. So it's family time. Um, can we perhaps look at something, um, even if it's in the side room, uh, say for the 27th? Is that a Wednesday? I'm good. I'll, I'll make it good. Whatever Dick, works. are you okay on the 27th? Dick, would you be good for the 27th? I believe so. Thank you. I mean, maybe we have, we have to check the availability of the conference room because I believe the ZBA is in. Uh, well, we can use another room, can't we? I need to check availability. Okay. Well, we don't need. Uh, I, 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 do we, 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 we can televise, I guess, if you want to, but I mean, I, uh, maybe we can always go. There's a library conference room or up at. Chapel Chapel yeah, we, can, we can check on the room. Yeah. It's a little behind your room. It's not a big deal. Okay. So let's target that. I'll get a note out to everybody. Is Dick in person? Dick, will you be in person on the 27th or probably remote? Um, Good question. I don't know. I mean, it's, I could probably, probably spare an hour in okay. person. If, if, if the conference rooms are available, we can do a Zoom in that room. Okay, thank you. Right, but my question is, if, if, he's, if he's in person, then we have we can guarantee three. If you guys are available, and I can, I, I can try to make it. I'd like to make it. Yep. But I, I just have a, a hard time committing to that at this very moment. Right. I, I understood. I'll send a note out so that people can okay. respond. Okay. And to obviously, it. the uh, Conan. I, I don't yeah. know if she's yeah, obviously. Exactly. I don't know if she's available. So I'll propose that as, as a date. I'll propose Great. some alternatives. Great. So if if we can't uh, find the twenty seventh, maybe you know, with staff and, and rooms, etc. Um, where okay. we can find something because I think it's, it's it's it would be important to okay so and, and we can come prepared obviously to that meeting with yes you know especially with uh, uh, yeah and, Dick's and, time commit uh, constraints yep and also um, I'll 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 send it up to the town board and ask for an extension that's correct well we we may not need one if we're on for September twenty seventh no. Mm, be tough to get it out the fairest, I think, even then. But I would ask for one anyway. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just uh, in case. Yes. Just noting that we need three days to notice the meeting. Okay. If it's if it's scheduled one week in advance, which is one. So okay. It's going to be scheduled one week in advance, then it's seventy-two hours. Notice. Okay. Just Great. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> how, how do we how do we get, get a message out, out to um, see if any. Um, Citizens want to come in, and well, it'll, and be, it'll be noticed. It'll be noticed. It'll, it'll be noticed, and there'll be a Zoom link provided. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Anything else on this? No, thank you. Okay. Also, all set on this. Okay. Uh, good. I'll get those notes out, and uh, our next item is an executive session advice of council. So we have to close down the. Uh, Zoom for anyone else? I guess it's just us anyway right now on Zoom. But if any members of the public, uh, they have to be closed out. And then the throngs will have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Give them time to leave. Uh, do you want the doors closed? We should. Yeah. Okay, I think we should.